Wow. Oh. Uh, no, that, now that, that's some special ring gear. This is a stunning new look from Still Life, showing off the midsection, wearing the beautiful fabrics, and letting the hair breathe out of this new mask. I love it. Uh, still Life got a, a little bit of help, though, with that, uh, that new ring gear, as we saw, right? True, but art always needs a little help from someone to put the paints on the canvas. It can't just hang itself up there and be in a museum. She needed a little assistance, a little outside creativity, but that doesn't make it any less Still Life. Press play. There's the magic finger. Pressing down. Yeah. The Wrestling Club with Darren and Brett. We've got a show that you'll never forget. Forget, forget. Greetings, Grapple fans, and welcome to WFMU's Wrestling Club, the only space that's safe for all wrestling fans, whether you're casual, lapsed, obsessed, or ashamed. I'm Darren, broadcasting from a serene and warm Jersey City tonight, where we are excited to bring you Wrestling Club. We were out last week, but we're back this week. And I want to thank everybody joining us on YouTube Live. I want to thank everybody joining us from the archive at WFMU.org, on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. If you want to join Wrestling Club tonight, you can give us a call on the hotline at 732-200-CLUB. Edith Surreal will be here later in the show. But first, my tag team partner coming to us live from... Hollywood, California, the headhunter A to my headhunter B, <laughs> Brett Davis. Brett, oh. we're here. We're back. We're back. And, you know, I just got to address this right off the bat. Ha- You're supposed ha- to ha- it's, it's, ha- our, oh, oh, it's our we'll mutual see. birthdays. Ha- ha- be, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the Garfunkel note. You take the Simon note. Darren celebrated his birthday on the sixth. Mine is coming up uh, in just a few days. Darren shares a birthday with Val Venus. I didn't, Mr. Know Kennedy. That. I also and share, Dave Blair. And also a fourth professional wrestler, Shaq. That's right. Yes. Yep. Yep. Shaq. Um, I, I don't have I don't have such a such luminaries. I, I share mine with uh, Kenny Dykstra, uh, Mark <laughs> Lewin, you Henry would. O. Godwin. Wow, Steve all your favorites. Armstrong, and the <laughs> Irish ace Jordan Devlin. <laughs> cool, I guess. Yes, we are Pisces. We feel a lot. We have a lot of feelings, and uh, you know, less feel. Actually, a lot of feelings about wrestling this week. Brett, how about yeah. you? Well, I mean, we've been off for two weeks. We've got a new WWE champion, the Bobby Miz. Lashley. Oh, Bobby Lashley. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the Ito Respect Army has finally hit American shores. Uh, Maki Ito made her uh, AEW debut on a show uh, this past weekend that uh, ended with a dud. of. Uh, oh, my goodness. Oh, did it ever. It was a little bit of a... Uh, it, was, it wasn't great. It wasn't the worst. Deathmatch ending. We'll talk about that later. But did you see Maki Ito debut on uh, what's that thing? They, the, 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 the Young Bucks have their little uh, TV show that they do. Did you see <laughs> Maki Ito on that? They're, they're like Dark Order's TV like, what do, so it's Dark Order, and they're like, what are we going to do? Anna Jay's down. What are we going to do? And Maki Ito comes in. She's like, hello, motherfuckers. When it comes to Anna, let's just be honest, guys. No woman could ever replace You're Anna. Right. It's I, true. Um, huh? Who's that? Surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> it's like she needs to say so many bad words on AEW immediately. She's ratings. You know, Meltzer says, Big Dave says this was their biggest pay-per-view of all time. And even though she wasn't advertised, I'm crediting Maki Ito Mm -hmm. on the pre-show. People saw it and they were like, that's it. She's coming in in the main event. She's going to blow up both those jabronis. Well, she is is main eventing uh, Elevation whenever that uh, premieres. Oh, I wonder. I think she's, I could see Paul White really digging her, you know? She probably. Oh, yeah, look at her. (laughs) 
<laughs> and then he like takes a hit of his vape. Uh, she likes rock, so does he. They're yeah, both rockers. Yeah, uh, Darren, you you suggested that Mahito should maybe add one uh, line of English to her theme song. I do, I do believe that. You know, I as but you know, I'm a big just song... Japanese. <laughs> is is an English song, <laughs> but it's it's not clear. I guess it is, right? Her, her last line is, "It's Brooklyn the whole." <laughs> okay, well, you're right. I think they need to play it up then, because you know I'm a big Japanese pop fan. You know, look at Plastic Love. That's the there's a reason. You know, everybody's, you know, uncle and mother and everybody else listens to that song because there's one verse in English, right? And it's great. Chai, the same way. Uh, I think it's a, it's a little, YMO would do that. It's like a good little trick. Uh, but she's already got it in English. Unfortunately, AEW's sound department is uh, a little interrelated with its pyrotechnics department. So it's her song is always has sounded bad both times on AEW. She was also on Dynamite this week. We'll talk about that in a set. Maybe we'll talk about that. Yeah. What are At we least talking they didn't about? Brett? Play a basketball game over it. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, like, Marvin uh, Gaye. There's Ethan like Marvin... Page's debut on uh, Dynamite. They just played a NBA game. <laughs> well, you know what? I I didn't know Ethan Page before, and I don't know him now. And I pro- I feel like I feel like he is. AEW has maybe an impact problem where, you know, there's parts of it that are good. Don Callis, excellent. Love Don Callis. Kenny Omega, he's he's really putting putting in uh, an interesting performance, right? But all the other impact stuff, the, the main event duds, you know, your Ethan Pages. What else? There's more impact going on every week. A basketball game. AEW has some... You know, while the uh, Darren, I don't know what point you just made. <laughs> well, I you said oh, AEW oh. has an impact problem. Then you named an AEW guy and an impact guy. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's go to the phone and see what they got to say. I don't we're connecting again. You can call in seven three two two hundred club. Hello, chat. you're on Wrestling Club. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can. What's up? Hey, what's up? Who is this? This is Colette from Athens. <gasps> Colette. Oh, we know Colette. Welcome. Colette, hello. Thank you for co- joining our birthday party. Hey, welcome to our birthday party. This is our birthday party, I yeah. guess. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you, Colette. Uh, you know, uh, you were a previous guest of the show. You did a, a, You're a, a member big, of Wrestling Club. A bona fide yeah. card-carrying member. That's right. That's right. So, so let me get the expert critical opinion of uh, the this AEW show we saw. <laughs> um, a lot of the matches were very long. Mm-hmm. Long uh, matches, yes. I'll, I'll write that down. Long, long matches. Uh, AEW hallmark long matches. Um, <laughs> that, that explosion. <laughs> um, someday we're gonna get tired of talking about it, uh, but. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's one of those things where like I I was cautiously optimistic about it going in. Like exploding ring death matches are probably my favorite kind of match. Uh, and then I just felt a a deep like gnawing sadness oh. as soon as the countdown ended. Like it's just it, it was haunting. <laughs> it was so covered, sad. Kind of. I feel like it wasn't the saddest deathmatch ending. I, 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 too, like deathmatches a lot, especially big, exploding deathmatches, the FMW style. I think it's great. And I, I wanted yeah. to go back and watch some of maybe the lesser-known uh, deathmatches just to compare. And the worst deathmatch finish, finish by far was the crocodile deathmatch. Are you familiar with this? Is it anything like the Piranha Tank deathmatch? <laughs> it's yes without water and also without a scary animal and with more animal yeah. cruelty unfortunately it i i it's like uh the winner i'm sorry the loser has to fight a crocodile and they have at the end of the match the guy's got to fight the crocodile he's sad and they literally pull out like a like a, a trunk and they open it and there is the world's tiniest crocodile <laughs> hiding oh, it's so scared i mean it's really upsetting it's like running away and like this guy's trying to like act scared of it but the crocodile is just you know 
it's just frozen in fear. How <laughs> big is this crocodile? The, like, the crocodile is, a, if you can't see the video, but it's like, it's like shoulder length for me. I'd say it's about two, maybe two feet. It's, it's like, maybe, maybe like a large, like a large house cat. Yeah, no, it's really so, sad. Like, in that vein, though, is like, is Kennel from Hell like Boss Man versus Al Snow? Is that a death match? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I think it's a death match. I mean, an animal like, died in it, like, right? WWE's one death match. <laughs> oh no! Did an animal die? I forgot. Well, oh. Pepper was eaten. <laughs> oh, rest in peace, yeah, Pepper. Right. Rest in peace, Pepper. I don't know if the crocodile from the, uh, I think it was in, in Wing or Big Japan, one of them. Uh, Big Japan also has another match, and this is what I'm saying. You know, Kenny and Moxley, I feel like they got to deliver on something at some point. Maybe they could do a Big Japan crisis death match, which is barbed wire board, thumbtacks, bed of nails, circus-style scaffold with barbed wire trampoline, tub of scorpions, cactus plants, light bulbs, fire stones, dry ice, barbed wire bats, all of Pogo's weapons, you know, drills, swords, knives, butt saws, in a street fight, tornado death match. Yeah, that sounds dope. I think I'll it'll be that. great. I think, or you know, maybe. Uh... They've already done the barbed wire trampoline. <laughs> Did they? Yeah, and they're and they're like. Oh uh, yeah, uh, that's the, right. Like, the unsanctioned match that they had. That's like, right. That was one of the big like when they were doing like a sampler of various deathmatch styles. Like that was one of them. They did the spot off the ramp into the trampoline. right. It was uh-huh. more like a spider net. No one bounced, but you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's kind of how barbed wire works. It kind of just grabs onto you, right? <laughs> Imagine bouncing. <laughs> yeah, it's not really, it's not really right. Oh my goodness. Well, Colette, uh, did you have any, uh, any anything else to share? We kind of threw a topic at you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh no, like y'all, y'all were talking about weird death matches, so I just figured like this was this was part of it. Um, I, I, I will say though, like there is precedent. Like you know, as as bad as I feel about the ending of that match, like it's also very, very much like the ending of of Terry Funk and Mick Foley, where like you know something good came out of it. Um, Absolutely, like, Funk and Foley's like reputations were kind of burnished by what they did afterwards, so far as that match stuff goes, and they had much better matches like as a result of that. I think that there's one. Um, my favorite match between the two of them at the death match is just a straight up like no ropes barbed wire match where they do a lot of crowd brawling, but also like a fire chair spot. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And like, it's pretty incredible. Like I, I, I feel like that kind of thing, I forget which one came first, but I feel like, you know, failure motivates like the best wrestlers to, to go harder. And it's not even failure on their part. Like, it's just like one of those things where like, IWA Japan's pyro sucked because they didn't have the same people that Onita did in FMW. Right. Um, but like, if anyone like listening, uh, like saw that and was like, Oh, this whole form of matches is, is terrible. Um, I think that like probably the best thing to maybe look up and like kind of see the potential for like everyone during the lead up to this was talking about Onita. Sure. Surely the best match like this i think is the one between megumi kudo and um combat toyota oh like yeah that's mm-hmm. not show. i i have a vhs with that on it somewhere but not near me but that's a fantastic so match yeah that's that really is probably the best death match i uh yeah like yeah <laughs> it was like tony when tony khan was like what did you want us to like legitimately blow people up like the only thing that i could picture like picture was combat toyota like german suplexing kudo into the barbed wire exploding ropes and like both of them getting fucked up like Jesus. that's the match of an of the night on a card that also featured an exploding ring like exploding barbed wire cage death match between onita and hayabusa like right it's amazing it's right. so good yeah both of those matches are worth checking out but like you know it's not it's the kind of thing where if you do it right like people remember it forever. I really don't think that people like, this will be something that gets brought up like at the end of the year where people will be like, ha ha ha. Remember that. But like, I, I still feel like COVID era shows <laughs> like no right. one's going to remember that. And, and the follow up, um, the follow up on dynamite. I thought, I mean, Eddie Kingston, right. Hit it out of the park. In my opinion, you know, he's just Kim so was really good. Like, yeah. Blaming impact Both wrestling seconds. for it is so funny. Oh, so smart. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe the next time they do it, they should put Maki Ito in it and just like cross the streams. That's what I said. Uh, everyone loves Maki Ito and everyone wants to see this go well. 
Well, Colette, we get, we got a guest to, to jump to, but uh, do you have any plugs? Anything going on? Any new articles um, coming out? Yeah, I mean, I, I post I post articles all the time uh, up at up at Fan Plate, where I am uh, the new head editor of that section. So, congratulations! Um, congratulations! The last one. Thank you. Um, I did an article about how Sting needs to learn how to do his makeup better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's and, true. Um, yeah, there was uh, there was one of oh I uh, I reviewed Eddie Guerrero's mullet, um, which I gave a nine point nine out of ten to. So um, yeah, if you want to check that stuff out, you can do it at uh, fanbite dot com slash And that's yeah. it. My my question is is it on a scale of bullets or is it on a scale of hairstyles? But I guess I'll have to read the article to find out. Yeah, you'll have to you'll have to read the article. All right. Well, thank you so much for calling. All right. Nice. Thanks, Colette. Nice. Nice yeah, hearing from you. Awesome. Dip, 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 boys and girls, it's your high flying red blood American Spitfire baby face with a heart of gold, feet too fast to catch, a Kentucky fly flying for him that I knock it right next Tuesday, and a smile that'll break glass heart and bend little face, baby. I'm a man of pride, I'm Kentucky pride, and I'm rock and roll personified. Dip, 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 I'm Bobby Blaze, and I'm telling you to support the WFMU Marathon. I'm about on furlough, your favorite criminal, the venereal delinquent, the asexual predator. 369 pounds of sexually transmitted destruction. The skull. <laughs> Harley Tobin. You don't give this station money. I'm coming for you. Support independent freeform radio with the WFMU Marathon and receive WFMU swag and prizes, including Darren's exclusive Marathon Premium. Find out more at WFMU.org. Be there. Uh, we, we've got a very special guest and this is, dare I say a scoop because, uh, our, our guest, she's gone through a metamorphosis in the past week or so, uh, and just debuted a, a new persona or, uh, it, it's hard, it's hard to review, uh, uh, our, our upcoming guests because there, there's a lot of, uh abstractness to it uh Ooh. formerly known as still life with apricots and pears uh now uh, she goes by the name edith surreal and just debuted on an enjoy wrestling show that just live streamed so this is technically a post-match interview so uh let's welcome our uh guest edith surreal welcome to the wrestling club oh my gosh thank you for having me can you hear me okay we can yes hey. edith, you sound great Thank you. You too. Uh, Thank you. So, <laughs> so uh, you just got out of the ring. <laughs> I did. Wow. Uh -huh. What a fight it was. Yes. Thank you. Uh, um, so so uh, where to begin? Uh, let, let's start uh, with this question that I like to start. What was your first exposure to professional wrestling? Um, it would have probably been like the first real exposure would be watching ECW. Um, I grew up in like the suburbs of Philadelphia. Um, and it was just on one of those like random cable access channels. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just happened to be like flipping through the TV and I knew what wrestling was, but it never really connected with me. And then I saw this and, you know, I was a kid, I was super young, too young to be watching anything like that. And I was just, just blown away by what I was seeing. Um, so yeah, ECW. Who who was it? Who was it? Balls Mahoney? Was it <laughs> Ian Rotten? <laughs> All of them. Um, I think my first favorite was probably uh, Rob Van Dam. Um, he just stood out from everybody, and like everything he did, just seemed like totally unreal to me. He mm. was so cool. I used to stay up and what well, my, I would stay up. Wait when I was like 10 or 12 or something and watch ECW at 2 a.m. And I felt like I was part of this weird subculture for the first time in my life. So ECW is huge for me as well. And I loved Rob Van Dam, but I love Boss Mahoney too. You know, he's, uh, I can relate to him. <laughs> he's a, a New Jersey guy from Nutley. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Um, so uh, it, it's, I, I, it's, it's like, there's, there's so many questions I want to ask. And then I get like, I want to stop myself because I don't want a, a full artist statement <laughs> here. <laughs> um, but like, what, what's your background? And then, 
was it was it like a consistent love of pro wrestling or was it like maybe you went down an alley and then saw like uh you know a theoretical alley and then kind of like brought back what you've learned to wrestling yeah so i mean i've been a lifelong fan i've definitely kind of waned a couple of times throughout my life um mainly i followed like like i was saying like rob van dam and then when he had both titles, I was like, this is it. Like, it's like I followed this one person for his whole career. He gets, like, the big achievement and then gets pulled over and stripped of both titles. Mm-hmm. And I was just, like, so crushed by that. And I just kind of, like, lost interest then. Um, I was also, for like... weed. Yes. <laughs> that's gonna like that's that's gonna be a a a weird thing for future generations uh wait you were surprised that rob van dam was smoking weed and you stripped (laughs) him of the world championship my favorite part about that video is just like because there's like the recording of the cop it's just like why is your shirt off (laughs) (laughs) i I did not know there was a video of this that just sticks out to me (laughs) um anyway um so yeah i've always been a lifelong fan i never really had a desire to step in the ring like i was never much of an athlete like i was always like an art kid um so it was never really something i thought about doing until um i got invited to do a free workshop at the russell factory um and i wasn't even gonna go but like my friends kind of like you know coaxed me into it and i was like okay and then I was like, oh, this is really cool. And we got invited to do uh, a class, which was only like seven weeks for two hours, Um, like once a week for seven weeks for two hours. And I just kind of fell in love. And I was working as an artist at that point and trying to make it as like a freelance illustrator and do that whole thing. I was doing gallery shows and stuff like that. But um, wrestling just kind of took over and I've kind of moved on from all of that and and just focused on being a wrestler. Um, and like, luckily now, like I'm starting to bring back some of those like visual arts that I was doing before. Like I design all my own merch and I got really into screen printing lately. So I'm printing posters um, and just kind of like being re-inspired as like a visual artist and as a wrestler. Yeah, I have to say the first thing that uh, attracted me to you was the, the your merch and like posters and graphics and stuff. It all looked like, like, oh, it's like a really cool band is playing. And then you look closer and it's like a, a wrestling, you know, poster or promo or whatever. Yes. Like I've always wanted, I always loved like gig posters. Like that was always like one of my favorite, like that was always my dream to design gig posters for all my favorite bands. And it it never really like worked out um, the way I dreamed of. But now I'm able to do that. But it's just like I'm the subject of it now. So um and as a designer, like you're always working for other people and now I'm able to like design for myself. It's it's really it's fun and it's rewarding and I can just do whatever I want. So uh, what what is the elevator pitch of of the gimmick that kind of put you on the map, which is still life with apricots and pears? Uh, how can you sum that up for somebody that maybe hasn't seen you perform? It's definitely way too long for an elevator pitch. It would be like the worst <laughs> elevator pitch. <ever. laughs> um, I mean, the basic idea of Still Life, um, the first iteration was Still Life was a creation of another wrestler whose name was Blank. Blank was the artist. And Still Life with Apricots and Pears is their masterpiece. So Still Life mm-hmm. a a living work of art. Okay. Uh, now, um, how, how does that translate into the ring? Because you do a lot of, uh, cool, like almost like a uh, world of sports style, like interesting submission holds that kind of resemble, uh, <laughs> like works of modern art. Like, uh, how does that influence the, the physical aspect of it? Um, yeah, I mean, you kind of, you hit it right there where it is a lot of the moves that I do are trying to to resemble a statue of some kind. Um, That's just kind of how I think about building, like even as a performer, that's just how I think of it. Is like I want, I think of moves or holds, how they would be frozen in time, like a photograph or just how they're being seen. And I want that one movement or like, I want whatever movements to look good frozen in time. So I think of them as a piece of art or a sculpture. And that's how I actually do it as a performer. And that definitely translates to the style of still life where 
Um, I'm much more drawn to more ornate movements or more like overly complex sometimes um, just because I want to create such a visual, visual, visual um, experience. Yeah, this is like kind of uncharted territory. Is, is anybody else like had this approach that, that you have noticed? Or is this kind of like you coming at this from a like wholly original angle? Um, I mean, I think I have my own like influences, but like I definitely um, take a lot of this from how I was trained. So I was trained by Orange Cassidy and Hollow Wicked um, and Cheeseburger and, you know, so many other people that came in and out of the Wrestle Factory. Um, so I'm just kind of taking what they what they taught me and putting like my own little spin on it. But, you know, as far as like, um, like I remember like Joey Janela came through the wrestle factory one time. Cause he did a, he did a couple of Chikara shows and he just talked about when he's doing moves, he thinks of how they look in a gift. Cause that's how the majority of people see wrestling as a gift or as mm -hmm. a gift. Um, so how does this look in a two second repeating pixelated image? Um, so it has to be really bold and expressive. There has to be a lot of body language to it. And all everything needs to happen within that two seconds. It's kind of the same philosophy when we talk about, um, like when we throw really big strikes, it's because it has to connect to the people at the very back of the audience, at the very, very back of this arena. And it's that same thing that has to connect in this choppy, low quality GIF. Um, Cause that's just how wrestling is, is kind of shared. Um, so I just take a lot of that influence and just kind of melt it into kind of my style. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious as to who the influences are, even if they're not, you know, uh, if the end result is not abundantly obvious. One outside of wrestling who I look at a lot is, uh, the director, Nicholas Winding Refren, who did drive, um, only God forgives neon demon. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the way he paces his violence. Um, so it's very, very slow. If you ever watch Drive or Valhalla Rising is another good one. Everything's really, really slow. It's almost boring. And then out of nowhere, it's this incredibly visceral, violent scene <laughs> um, that just catches you by surprise. I mean, it's kind of like when Ryan Gosling's character was stomping the guy in the elevator. Like, mm -hmm. it's a feels like you're watching a love story like he changes the whole movie and then all of a sudden there's this brutal fight um so i like that and especially when i worked was working more as a heel i tried to implement that it's kind of harder as like you know the the crowd favorite now to do something like that but i kind of look at a lot of stuff like that in how i'm pacing these matches to kind of catch people off guard by something yeah um uh, it's it's been a dream of mine because you know I, I think a lot of wrestling fans, particularly ones probably listening to the show, uh, have seen the potential for wrestling because it's it is very you know simple. Uh, like my dream is to get a grant or something. I'm not a good artist, so I I wouldn't know how to do any of that. I don't know. Maybe maybe you know, <laughs> but get a grant, get a bunch of artists and a bunch of wrestlers in there. Uh, project runway style, make them collaborate, uh, and then have some sort of exhibition at the end and see like what kind of, you know, maybe a musician or maybe a visual artist or a performance artist, uh, like just kind of apply their process uh, to wrestling. And I think, you know, as a compliment to you and kind of what you're, where you're pulling your influences from, it would, you know, you're, you're maybe like the ultimate example of what, like the best case scenario for that would be. Thanks. That sounds really cool. I'm really interested in learning more about that. I mean, take take this idea. Go to like Pioneer Works or something. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't. I don't know where to start. Uh, yeah. What? what uh, now that you know the Chikara sort of like alumni are blowing up. What is that like to see? And is it like inspiring to see maybe like Orange Cassidy? does something in the similar vein uh like is that is that cool to see do you do you have like hopes or uh you know goals as far as things you want to accomplish maybe on a grander scale yeah i mean it's definitely inspiring and i'm thankful that they all kind of keep in touch with us you know i talk to drew gulak a lot i talk to 
Orange Cassidy a lot. Um, so I'm thankful that I still have their influence and they still will kind of drop by to train once in a while. Um, so yeah, it's like super inspiring and it's really fun to see techniques that I know um, on display like every week, you know, like it's like the exact way that I was taught to do a certain hold or, or, or something like that to see how that translates on TV. Um, and as far as my goals are, I mean, it's, it's hard to say because like as an artist, I had all these really strict goals and I was, did all the Sam goals and the smart goals and all those little read all those books and stuff about like, you know, accomplishing what you want out of your career. And I was always disappointed because it was really hard to meet them. And I, I didn't always meet those goals. So as a wrestler, I was just like, don't really want to set any goals like that. Um, I just want to like say yes to every opportunity that comes my way. Um, so I just took it very differently. Um, and I'm really thankful with, so, you know, thankful with where I'm at with my career. Um, you know, only being three years in and, um, getting the opportunities I have, it's, I'm very, I don't take it for granted and I appreciate it, but, um, you know, I am starting to think about what I want to do next. Um, I'd love to like, I want to be full time at this, you know, I want to have enough bookings that, you know, it will pay my bills. And I know like, I'm fortunate that I have this skill to contribute, contribute to merch. Like I don't have to pay a designer. I can make a lot of it myself. Um, and it, you know, people seem to like it. So, um, all that will kind of help me get to where I want to go. Um, but yeah, I just love to do this all the time. <laughs> well, well, you have a lot of merch to now throw out because you've, yeah. you've undergone a metamorphosis. <laughs> I don't um, oh. is, is this the first official Edith Surreal interview? <gasps> oh my gosh, it is. Lucky you. Yeah. Wow. You got the scoop. <laughs> Yeah, so you, uh, again, this is a post batch interview. I'm sure you're still like you know wiping off the sweat and everything. Uh, but uh, you just had your uh, debut um, live streamed uh, via Enjoy Wrestling, uh, or or I guess re, re debut unveiling maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what is what is the Edith surreal mentality in comparison to you know still life? I mean, it's hard to say because I don't really see them as like separate characters. Um, mm -hmm. And I didn't want them to be viewed that way. It's just kind of a continued iteration, um, which is one of the reasons why I kept, like I unveiled the new gear at Still Life and then changed the name to Edith. Um, mm -hmm. And I just want it to be, I don't know, thought of the same way as just kind of this more human form of Still Life. Um, so it's just kind of simple in that way. And I just wanted to have a name that like, you know, someone else named me, like blank named me. Um, so I kind of wanted to take control of that, um, mm -hmm. give myself my own name, because it, it kind of mirrors like my transition. Um, you know, I had I am changing my legal name um, versus what like my parents gave me, because um, it's like I, now I'm in control of my destiny as a person. Um, I want to be in control of my destiny as a wrestler. So. For me, that meant changing the name. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, on that note, like uh, big gay brunch is coming up. Um, yeah. That's so fascinating to me because uh, it's it's it, it feels like you're watching a a new genre uh, kind of bubble up uh, in just what Effie has been organizing, and you know, other people have been organizing similar things too, but. Uh, like has has that been inspiring now that there's kind of this LGBTQ, uh, you know, movement that's kind of taking attention, or, or you know, getting more attention than maybe it had been, you know, previous years. Yeah, absolutely, it's super inspiring. I think, um, you know, a lot of us have always struggled with how we were treated, um, whether it's we're thought of like a comedy act or. Um, just kind of like a popcorn match or something like that, um, or feeling, you know, unsafe in a locker room or, you know, la lack of bookings because they, you know, a booker thought the audience wouldn't understand us. You know, I, I was told a few times um, that like the audience wouldn't get the non-binary thing or the trans thing. 
Um, so now we're kind of able to come together and build something um, and build a name for ourselves that everyone can kind of really get behind and really show what we can do in the ring. Because, you know, any uh, for a long time when I would show up to a match, um, they kind of just, everyone just wanted comedy out of me. Um, they wanted to do something that involved like my poses and things like that, which that's fun. Sure. But like, that's just like, that's just kind of my entrance. You know, I always viewed it as like, I have this character that I do, um, and these expressions that I do, but then the bell rings and I'm a wrestler. Like that's how we were trained in Chikara, you know? Um, so it was kind of disheartening to not get to show that all the time. Um, but now with like gay brunch, like that was kind of the whole inspiration for all of it is to really show what we can do as performers, as professional wrestlers. Um, and I'm thankful that we got a lot of it, like positive attention for that. And I think what I was able to do at my match with dark chic at the first gay brunch, I think that helped me, you know, Brett saw that and put me in the acid cup. Um, I don't know if that opportunity would have come had I not been on gay brunch. So just to kind of see that that little reward or that an answer to that um has been awesome i mean even like at beyond like my first match at beyond it was very gimmicky and very like uh character based but you know now that i'm kind of showing that i can wrestle now these opportunities are much more like competitive um mm -hmm. which i love i love to wrestle <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 kind of I mean, it's like with any gimmick, uh, you know, you need the squash matches to establish it. But it seems like with Big Gay Brunch, uh, a lot of the stuff that might take a little bit of time to adjust to or get used to. It's like all that's kind of wiped off and you can go out there and just do you without uh, the short with a shorthand, uh, you know, without having to kind of like reestablish everything. Yeah. Uh, so that's cool to see. Yeah, exactly. And I also just love the idea of just like, we are kind of, I don't know if it's a new genre, but it's our own spin. We're painting with our own colors there. Mm -hmm. um, and I would love to see that like other promoters and other companies say like, oh, we need a splash of this on, on our show. Um, I want to see us all, you know, branch out and have any kind of show, not just a queer show, have this talent on there because we all deserve to be there. I mean, there's so many incredible wrestlers on the gay brunch roster that you know they all deserve a much bigger platform yeah i mean it's uh the collective shows at least like as seen as a whole it's it's so eclectic uh mm -hmm. and that's you know just very cool to me after seeing you know generic indie wrestling for my whole life yeah um during the the 24-hour show that there was a block that was it was like all night, it was like GCW deathmatchy stuff. And then in the morning, it was uh, Camp Leave Frog with the, the Cybernetico. So one match for an hour and then right into Gay Brunch and right into Hot Girl shit. Like, mm -hmm. uh, what a great way to start your Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, all right, who, who, who are the dream opponents? <gasps> oh my gosh. Um, I mean, my first one would be Hollow Wicked. Um, mm -hmm. you know, he was my kind of my primary trainer and I never got to have a singles match with him. So he's, he's top. Um, do you want like a list? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, and, and I'm particularly curious if there's one, like, I, I always think back to like Brian Danielson versus Kamala <laughs> for the <laughs> ring of honor championship. Like, like just a real, like, Oh, you wanted to wrestle Kamala. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. That is a fun match. I don't know why I'm funny like that. Um, <laughs> well, would be just just Madison. throw hacks on there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I do that. Um, uh, I love like mixing up with anyone who's like very, very different from me. Um, any kind of like clash of styles in that way is always so fun. Like a lot of people want to book um, me in kind of similar similar opponents which is fine um but like when it's different i think is when it's really really cool um but yeah back to your question about like dream opponents as far as styles go i love i would love to wrestle madison eagles um i like you know i study a lot of her matches and i um i don't know i would just like i would love to wrestle her um 
Oh my god, I always like fumble on this question, and like it, it's on every podcast, and I should just have this list ready to go. But... Oh, I thought this was like a cool original question. Oh, Good job, Brett. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, who's who's your like mania opponent? You know, you you just get it's it's like your your desert island match. Vince yeah. calls. <laughs> oh, for WrestleMania, is this like a WWE person I have to wrestle? I mean, it could be it could be whoever, past, present, or future. Oh God! Um, if we're including not living China, that would be it. Oh yeah. Um, I grew up loving her, so um, as far as like Fed people, it would be China. Well, uh, y- you have the uh, Cassandra Cup coming. Yes. Uh, t- tell us. A little, I mean, we've talked about Cassandra. We're big fans here at Wrestling Club. Um, but yeah, can you tell us like what? uh fans can expect from this yeah um i think kind of in the same vein as gay brunch it's you know we're taking six um of the best like queer talent and we're having a tournament and um i'm just really excited about it it's a huge opportunity and i'm like flattered that my name's on there um you know we kind of view this as like you know, Cassandra did a lot of the work and kind of paved the way for like queer talent to be to go from that kind of joke to um, someone who was thought of as like competitive in the ring um, and who was able to be taken serious and to create a space for us. So we all see him as as the reasons we can do this, the reason why people like us can perform. It's not just this one type of wrestler. Um, so I think we want to kind of take that work and and continue doing it. Um, Like I was just saying with gay brunch, you know, like for a long time, like queer talent was either in the closet or, you know, like a joke and we want to be serious and we want to show that we're not going away and that we're putting this in your face and you don't have to, you know, young fans don't have to search in the underground for people like them. Like representation is now, right in the main event it's right in the forefront it's the you know it's the whole card so that kind of representation and that kind of like responsibility is is really important to me and and the whole roster yeah and uh you know just to see cassandra who's kind of been like a cult hero you know shikara was always like a, a good uh, they were good at like Johnny Saint and Skyda and like Banami Toyota came through and it's like, you know, uh, for being a fan of Cassandra for so long, it's like really great to see, like you know, there, there's a movie coming out now, <laughs> <laughs> which is insane, you know, like a real movie with uh, oh, who's who's playing Cassandra? I don't know. <laughs> I'm forgetting. Uh, I'll I'll find this. Um, but yeah, just like so cool, you know. While they're still active, um, oh, wait. Gail Garcia Bernal. Yes, mm-hmm. I did know. <laughs> <laughs> like that's yeah. oh, incredible. He's actor too. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and Cassandra's just incredible. Like I didn't, um, I didn't really get a chance to say hi uh, before my match at, at uh, Big Gay Brunch, but we happened to have our merch set up next to each other, um, and just like the sweetest person just came up, gave me like a huge hug right away. Um, and we just like sat and talked. Like we had, you know, our lines had died down. We sell, sold everything we were going to sell. And like, we just hung out and like, we were outside this gorgeous venue and just like talked for like an hour, um, just about wrestling and about life and stuff like that. So um, it's really, I'm really thankful that, you know, like a hero is also like a nice person. Yeah. That's always the way it's stuck if like Cassandra is so shitty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's no, like no, your no, your no. your merch is touching my merch. <laughs> Move it. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much for for joining us uh, on the wrestling club. Uh, do Do you have any plugs? Anything else? Any upcoming matches you want to cut a promo for? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, I have a match coming up on Beyond Wrestling, uh, second round of the tournament for tomorrow. I'm not sure when it's airing, uh, but it'll be on IWTV and Beyond Signature Series is every Thursday at eight o'clock. Um, upcoming matches. I don't know when any of them are airing except Cassandro Cup, which is May 20, ugh, 
March 28th um, on independent wrestling television and then a lot going on um, during the collective weekend and the showcase of the independents. Um, and then you can find me on social media at Edith Surreal on Twitter and Instagram um, and Pinterest. Follow me on Pinterest. I pin some really cute stuff. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and any words for uh, Ziggy Hyam who unmasked you last I'm week? So upset, like she just ruined everything. Um, you know, I wasn't like planning on debuting that gear, but she took the mask. But I got something coming her way. Tune in next week, seven thirty. Enjoy wrestling. It's on YouTube. Um, I'm not done with her. I'm not done with her. I, I liked her so much. She came out to La Tigra. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and I was like, wow, what a great. And then, you know, just to, to be disappointed by despicable, but you hand, but you handled it with grace and poise. Oh, thank you. I'm just so mm -hmm. thankful that the, the bird and the bee were there to like, you know, chase her off. I don't know what would have happened had I been defenseless without my mask. So I'm thankful for, you know, thankful for them. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, I, I I hope you can, you know, uh, <laughs> towel up and do, I don't know what wrestlers do after matches. Yeah, go go to Cracker we, Barrel. Uh, <laughs> match and then we towel up. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then we get on our private jets and fly, fly to our mansions. <laughs> yeah, fly to Florida. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Hang out. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Take care. You too. Thank you, Edith. Uh, Edith Surreal. Edith Surreal. Formerly yeah, known as Still Life. I'm going to call it right now. Edith Surreal will be the biggest star we've ever had on Wrestling Club. Real? Bigger than Terry Funk? Well, t Terry Funk's star has dimmed over the years. Okay. Biggest that they, I'm saying I, it. Yeah. Future star, I could see that. Star. Future star, I guess that's what I mean. Future mm -hmm. star, uh, but great, uh, wonderful. Edith, what a birthday! Edith, Edith is saying bigger than Terry Funk. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm going for it. Absolutely. You know, hopefully, you know, I mean, Edith could be NWA champion. You know, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I, just I don't know. Bringing Billy back Iris uh, for better or worse, I could see Billy Corgan being into the gimmick. He loves art, right? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> they just announced Tyrus is making his return. So, <sighs> Boy, Fox wow. News is uh, uh, Funkasaurus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fox News is Funkasaurus. Oh, good. Well, that's great. We'll be tu you'll be tuning into NWA. You'll be doing our NWA report every week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll be the Gordon Soli. <laughs> <laughs> and Funk I guess that makes me the John Arezzi. That's not good. Yeah, that's not good for us. Actually, no, I like John Resi. I shouldn't. I shouldn't talk. Uh, I shouldn't talk smack. Well, you know, you should talk about the WFMU marathon because you're you're a week. We are running this marathon. I would say if this was a running marathon, I would be in the lead. I have been at WFMU for hours and hours every night. Operating the board as pledges come in. Pledge at WFMU.org slash pledge. WFMU fundraising marathon will continue until March the 21st. So if you like Wrestling Club and you want to support us, pledge at WFMU.org slash pledge. They've got, you know, WFMU is listener supported 100%. We have no corporate underwriting. There's no advertising. We are supported solely by the generosity of our listeners. So, you know, if you're in the wrestling club universe, it's time to uh, pay your dues. Any good club has dues, right? Mm -hmm. And this is your dues. So WFMU.org slash pledge on the pledge page. If you want, you can click my name and then that'll be a little extra, uh, you know, gold star for your, you know, underdog DJ. But 
it doesn't matter. All the money goes to the station anyway. So WFMU.org slash pledge. I'll be raising money live on the radio from 3 to 6 a.m. this Saturday into Sunday night. Zoe B will be my co-host. I don't know if you know her program, but she's uh, uh, without a doubt the best WFMU DJ in the overnights in the last five, six years. She's fantastic. So it'll be an interesting uh, clash of styles. Uh, Zoe whispers, I scream. So we're going (laughs) to have try to have a polite conversation. But that's three to six a.m. this Saturday into Sunday. I mean, this is what this is what uh, we were just talking about. You, d- different styles, you know. You know, but the funny thing is, we Coming play. I'll, I'll I'll find a song right, and I'll say, "This would be great on my show." And then there's like a little little gadget we got that you can see what what it's been played on. If it's been played on WFMU before, and it's a, I say, you know, eight out of ten times, he's always played it. You know, two two years earlier, <laughs> like just so much cooler than me. But I, I mean, this, I, I'm, I'm a little worried. I might get replaced as your tag partner. That soon it's going to be wrestling club yeah, with maybe, Darren and Zoe. Maybe Zoe could be our crush. <laughs> what? what the, our, our, your smash. Your smash. Oh, I see. Max. Yeah. I'm Max. I, I thought you, you meant our ob- the object of our affection. If we're gonna, if if we're looking at like classic WWF tag teams, you know, and we're saying, okay, we're demolition. If we were gonna be demolition for Halloween, obviously, I'd be Axe, right? Or would I be? Sm- am I more of an Axe or a Smash? What do you think? I don't. I think you've got the uh, Smash energy. <laughs> the Axe. The, the you've got the Axe uh, experience. He's saying I'm older. I say you're old. I'm, I'm, yeah, Axe is very old. Yeah. Uh, but, well, you know, I love seeing Axe at like, there's like just photos of him as like, you know, a guy that goes to conventions and he'll like just over the years, his face paint efforts have just like, gotten <laughs> less, it's, less. it's literally a few lines now. Yeah. I say get rid of the uh, Axe gimmick. I mean, it was great and, you know, it had its time, but go back to the OG. Say throw the mask on, mask superstar. It's it's so easy. It's so simple. Everybody and everybody loves the mask superstar. The kids, <laughs> look, he's, he's got a mask on. Yeah, and he's I a mean, superstar. What I else mean, do you need? Uh, Brian Alvarez has said it before. You know, if 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 you're going to be a wrestler, uh, start with the mask. Start with face paint. So Edith is already you know ahead of the game because you Sting is sixty years old, sixty one, and wrestled a great match. Yeah, and so, you know what? Participated imagine if, in a great imagine short if film. he doesn't have that face paint on though, and it's just that hair. It was rough. Really bad. It was really bad. But but and I'll say this. Soul but, patch. But you know, he's good. He's good. He's doing good. Him and Darby. You think he's taking Darby to, you know, Sunday service, trying to get him to be like, hey, you know, we got cool stuff here. <laughs> we got kids your age. We got skateboarding. I- See, I, I think it's the op. I think he's uh, Darby's taken Sting to like the co op. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like some like punk shows. Yeah. <laughs> Be like, on. here, here, these are, here, eat these mushrooms from a, a Ziploc bag I have here. That'd be nice. That'd be yeah. nice. I wonder if they trip. I wonder, I wonder how, you know, that's what we got to find out. And we're, this is going to be my mission in the next couple of weeks. I, I don't know how I'm going to accomplish it. I want to find out who at WWE likes just psychedelic drugs. Who do you think it is? Uh, Michael P.S. Hayes. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's that's exactly right. Jo- Johnny Ace. You think Johnny Ace ever? Uh, I mean, not drops? now. I, oh, I mean, I uh, that's the thing. They get those drug tests and stuff, probably. I'm telling you, are you excited for bikini wrestling? What? Johnny Ace. Johnny Ace. He was the bikini uh he would be like, I'm gonna get the uh, let me get that Sears catalog because this is where, oh, the, yeah, that's where right. all the hotties are in the Sears catalog. Let's where he picked their... out his future daughters. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. no, You know, I never oh, thought. Oh wow, it's that pretty hot. <laughs> oh you should get the... look, it's twins. Anyway, if Johnny yeah. Ace is listening, I'd love to have him call in. We have a couple questions for him. Daddy, we can't book you. <laughs> we schedules, can't book you. But uh, we'd yeah, love to just call in. <laughs> yeah, you have open lines here, okay? Uh, wonderful. I. Yeah. Uh, well, we're going on and on. 
Well, uh, shout out to Jared Sheik uh, on our YouTube page. We're actually going to be switching YouTubes uh, uh, with a bunch of new videos coming. We've had this show kind of tied in with uh, our previous show, The Special Without Brett Davis. Which uh, is dead. Which is dead. Um, Mr. Jokes and- came back and took it from our little memorial we had for it. And now it's in hell with him. Yeah. <laughs> No, he's not in hell. He's not in hell. He's in okay. heaven. But he put the show in hell. He dropped the show off in hell, and now he's ascended with, you know, Richard Simmons or whoever he hangs out with up there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> whatever he's doing up there. He's at the, you know, whatever comedy show. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so we'll, we'll be moving. So, uh, you know, but most of the comments we get on the specials are like, um, you know, People writing in Portuguese that they loved a band we played, we had threats. on. Or we get we get threats too. Uh huh. Lots of uh, lots of alt right people uh, mad that we made fun of a uh, million dollar extreme once. Look, we should have never became the official cable access show of Parlor. We regret it. We <laughs> didn't know. We thought it was free speech. We were for it. We didn't know. We yeah. Got First Amendment. First Amendment. It's better than being for the Second Amendment. They got all it- the other ones that are bad. We had Dasha Nekrasova on when she was just like a, a like a little meme. We <laughs> and, should have uh, taken we should have taken that RT deal when Jesse the Body came through for us. You know that would have been where we needed to go. Yeah, they I, they would have protected. I, I think us. there's going to be the the R, the RT trials in a few years. Look, so I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. If you don't support WFMU this year, it will die. That's number one. And number two, if WFMU dies, Wrestling Club either dies. Or we gotta go on RT podcasts network, and that's not great <laughs> for us. All right, we got families we want to protect. I mean, I have a family. Brett's working on his, and you know, so please wfmu.org slash pledge. They got all kinds of cool stuff. You're a rocker. They got bandanas. It's great. So wfmu.org slash pledge. And you got your premium, which has Dump Matsumoto and Bull Nakano oh, on the cover. Right. You did such a great job with your art. You know, you are a true art. You're well, you're not an artist, but you did a great job with it. It looks fantastic. We'll post it on the uh, on the Instagram at Wrestling Club WFMU on Instagram. Uh, and I, I have a little plug. Uh, if if you want to check out the. Uh... <laughs> Chris Gethard is doing a new New Jersey centric centric podcast. This is not your plug. And uh, <laughs> uh, there there is uh, some content uh, available that is uh, the story of uh, at least a part portion of our lives, uh, the New Brunswick, uh, New Jersey era. A lot of uh, shit stories. Yep, yeah, Meat Town, baby. Brett, you ever uh, you ever do it in Meat Town? I had to think about it, but no. <laughs> I did. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Now, it, now it's Wrestling Club After Dark. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Check out the new YouTube page. Check us out on Instagram at Wrestling Club WFMU. Uh, check out our archive of past episodes. Uh, check us out on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Club underscore. And Darren, why don't you take us home? All right. Thanks, Brett. Thanks to Edith Surreal. My name is Darren. You can pledge to WFMU at WFMU.org slash pledge. We'll be back next Thursday night with a whole new show. But until then, this has been Wrestling Club. We'll see you next week. Bye. The Wrestling Club with Darren and Brett. We've got a show that you'll never forget. Forget, forget.